Good afternoon, welcome to today's daily briefing in the afternoon at 15.49pm. I am updating you on the current situation on coronavirus. I will now identify myself. News reporter Dwayne Hards with MK Local News and Awareness UK3. Made MP Jonathan Edwards arrested on suspicion of common assault. It would be inappropriate for the party to comment further at this time. Dominic Cummins visited parents' home whilst he had symptoms. Coronavirus. The five things the COVID-19 symptom tracking app tells us coronavirus. Five things the COVID-19 system tracking app tells us. The Office for National Statistics, ONS, gives us a lower estimate, although so far it has only surveyed England. A swab test survey of nearly 15,000 people aged over two in the two weeks to 17th of May suggested 137,000 people in England, 0.25% were infected. The same study for ONS suggests there are 8,700 new infections a day on average in England, while the study KSCL on a group of 980,000 app users suggests that there are 9,900. Both estimates come with margins of error or of plus or minus. A few thousand so they are not as different as they might seem. The model predicts whether a person has coronavirus using their age, gender and the symptoms. They enter into the app. This gives a daily estimate of how many users aged between 20 to 69 have coronavirus in each local authority and age bracket. Research should scale these figures up showing the populate using the population and age breakdown in each local authority to predict the number of coronavirus cases in the general population. Like all models, it doesn't get it right every time. The research should say it will miss about 35% of people with coronavirus and flag about 22% of healthy people since the predictions are based on app users who tend to be younger and more affluent. The model might be less accurate when scaled up to the general population. This model doesn't make predictions for people under 20 or over 69 because of a lack of data. KCL have been publishing their estimates on a daily basis so the findings have not been yet been peer reviewed. Disease increased after major sporting events. Areas that hosted sports events in the days before mass gatherings were cancelled became infection hotspots. According to the research data suggested a high rate of infections in Cheltenham following the Gold Cup horse racing event and a rise in Liverpool after a Liverpool versus Atletico Madrid Champions League football game. Liverpool City Council has launched an investigation into the outbreak, but Gloucestershire County Council, which oversees the Cheltenham Festival, said any investigation should be led at a national level. The Cheltenham Festival was described as the best way to spread the virus. Four. The spike in Wales remains a mystery. A map of the CIS symptom tracking app data demonstrates that at the peak of the epidemic, the estimated cases were clustered in cities including London, Birmingham, Liverpool and Glasgow. But the researchers were surprised by heavy concentration of estimated cases in South Wales around a week before the height of the hospital activity in the area. We never really understood why it was a hotspot. No one comes up with a convincing explanation, said Professor Spector. Five, scientists could predict how the disease will progress in different people. Although the government initially warned the key symptoms of COVID-19 were a fever or continuous cough, data collected by the symptom tracking app suggests the disease has a wide range of symptoms, fatigue, shortness of breath, diarrhea, deli delirium, skipped meals, abdominal pain, chest pain, and a hoarse voice were all associated with the virus. But the strongest warning signs of infection are a loss of taste or smell. According to the findings from the team published in the journal Nature of Medicine, these symptoms were added to the UK's list of those that people should self-isolate with on Monday, several weeks after Professor Spexer and other experts have called for guidance to be changed. The KCL scientists have also noticed there are patterns in the different symptoms people with COVID-19 have which they think from form six distinct groups. They hope soon to be able to predict how the disease will progress in a person based on the symptoms they have on the first day.
Pakistan plane crashed, survivor said. All I could see was fire. The crash happened in the Model Colony residential area. One of the survivors on Friday's plane crash in the Pakistani city of Karachi has described his ordeal, saying he, all he could see was fire. Passenger Mohammed, Mohammed Zubair, Zubair was one of uh, at least two passengers who survived after the Pakistan International Airlines PIA Airbus A A320 came down in a residential area. Wow. Health authorities in Sindh province that 97 deaths have been confirmed. The cause of the crash is not yet known. The pilot had reported a technical fault after one failed landing attempt. According to local media in Pakistan, then issued a Mayday call as the plane came down. It came days after Pakistan allowed commercial flights to resume after the country's lock coronavirus lockdown was eased. How did Mohammed Zabair escape? Flight PK-8303, an Airbus A320 carrying 91 passengers and 8 crew members, including many families travelling ahead of Sunday's Eid holiday, had travelled from Lahore. It was attempting to land at Karachi's Jinnah International Airport at about 14.30 local time, 9.30 GMT when it came down. Mr Zubair, was, who suffered only minor injuries, said the plane attempted one landing and then crashed 10 to 15 minutes later. No one was aware that the plane was about to crash. They were flying the plane in a smooth manner, he said. He lost consciousness following the crash. When he came to, he said, I could hear screams from all directions, kids and adults. All I could see was fire. I couldn't see any people, just hear their screams. I opened my seatbelt and saw some light. I went towards the light. I had to jump down about 10 feet, 3 metres to get to safety. He added, why did the aircraft crash? The plane was only just short of a runway perimeter when it struck houses in the model colony, a residential area. TV footage showed rescue crews combining through debris strewn across the streets of the densely populated zone. A number of cars were set on fire. Eyewitnesses Mohammed Uzair told Khan told the BBC he had heard a massive sound when he went outside his home. Almost four houses were completely collapsed. There was so much fire and smoke. He said, they are all my neighbours. I can't tell you what a horrible thing it was. One civil aviation, aviation official told Reacher's the plane may have been unable to lower its undercarriage. Images posted on social media appear to show scorch marks under both engines with no undercarriage visible on approach. Investigators will try to retrieve the so-called black box recorders to help determine the cause. A committee of investigation has already been set up. PIA said the plane had joined the fleet in 2014 and passed its annual air worthlessness inspection last November. The plane crashed in a residential area. What do we know about the casualties? According to the local authorities, 97 deaths have been confirmed, although it is unclear how many of the dead were passengers and how many residents on the ground. 19 of the dead had been identified. Zafar Masad president of the bank of Pun Punjab, was the one other passenger who survived the crash. A provincial, gov provincial government spokesman said both were at the front of the plane. There are reports of other survivors, but they have not been confirmed. Many of those on board were families travelling ahead of Sunday's Eid holiday. On Saturday, funerals took place for some of the victims in Karachi. DNA tests are being conducted on the bodies of others before they can be handed over to relatives. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan said he was shocked and saddened by the crash, rightly so, promising an immediate investigation. But the Pakistan Airline Pilots Association, PALPA Palpa, said it had no faith in the official investigation. The group called for international investigators to be involved in the inquiry. What's what is Pakistan's safety record like? Pakistan has a checkered aviation safety record, including a number of airliner crash crashes. In 2010, an airline operated by private airline AirBlue crashed near Islamabad, killing all 152 people on board. The deadliest air disaster ever in Pakistan. Who sounds it? 
In 2012, a Boeing 737-200 operated by Pakistan's Boja Air crashed in bad weather on its approach to land in rural Pindi, killing all 121 passengers and six crew members. That's, that's very sad. And in 2016, a Pakistan International Airlines plane burst into flames while travelling from northern, pa northern Pakistan to Islamabad, killing 47 people. Christ. Trump drug hydrochloroquine raises death risk in COVID patients, study says. Coronavirus quarantine plans for UK arrivals unveil people arriving in the UK must self-isolate for 14 days from 8th of June to help slow the spread of coronavirus. The UK government has said travellers will need to tell the government where they will quarantine with enforcement through random spot checks and £1,000 fines in England. Well, at least they're doing something. Home Secretary Pretty Patel said the measure would reduce the risk of cases crossing our border. Rightly so. Lorry drivers, seasonal farm workers, and coronavirus medics will be exempt. We need key workers. The requirement will also not apply to those travelling from the Republic of Ireland and the Channel Islands and the Isle of Man. The Home Secretary said the measures will be reviewed every three weeks. If a person does not have su suitable accommodation to go to, they will be required to stay in facilities arranged by the government at the person's own expense, according to Border Force Chief Paul Lincoln. According to the Home Office, the new policy will be in the pl in place across the UK. However, how it is enforced in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland will be determined by the developed administrations. It really needs to be law. We need it to be the law. It would help us a lot. Anyway, Scotland's First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, said discussions would take place with Police Scotland to work out how the policy will be implemented. Why don't they just get it made legal? Seriously. Anyway, not shutting down. Miss Patel told the Daily Downing Street briefing the measures were not the same as completely shutting the UK border to visitors. We are not shutting down completely. We are not closing our borders, she said, and asked about the prospect of foreign holidays this summer. She added, this is absolutely not about booking holidays. We want to avoid a second wave, and that is absolutely vital. Yeah, of course, that's rightly so. So called air bridges agreements with countries that have low infection rates allowing tourists to travel without quarantining <sighs> will not be in place initially, the government said. The new measure, previously announced by Prime Minister Boris Johnson, will be reviewed every three weeks once it is introduced. The airlines have said a quarantine requirement would effectively kill air travel and one airport boss described the plans as a blunt tool. The government currently recommends international travel only when absolutely necessary, which is nearly no when, and nobody should travel if they display any coronavirus symptoms. Victoria Bacon from ABTA, the travel industry trace body, trade body, told the BBC the government needs to come up with some wider, more forward-thinking strategies for the industry. She said there's a whole range of support, not just financial, but the government can put in place to start helping the sector and we've already heard very little from them. We really desperately need some help. What does the new system involve? Passengers arriving in the UK will be required to fill out an online locator contact form providing details of where they will spend their 14 days in self-isolation period. The Home Office said the proposed accommodation will need to meet necessary requirements such as a hotel or private address with friends or family. There will be a fine of £100 for failure to complete the form and the Border Force will have the power to refuse entry to non-UK citizens who do not comply with the new regulations. Well, yeah, rightly so, I mean, to be honest. Anyway, new arrivals will be held today when they may be contracted at any time during their quarantine and in England may be visited by public health authorities conducting spot checks. They will be, they will be told to avoid public transport and travel to their accommodation by car where possible and do not go out to buy food or other essentials where they can rely on others. In England, a breach of self-isolation would be punishable by a £1,000 fixed penalty notice, FPN, or prosecution <clears throat> and an unlimited fine for persistent offenders. The big question being asked about quarantine is why now? 
the government argues that it simply wouldn't have made enough of a difference while the <coughs> virus was spreading widely within the UK. But it hasn't so far fully explained why such a blanket measure was not introduced much earlier in the outbreak before the virus took hold. People returning from Wuhan City and Hubei province in China were put into isolation for 14 days from late January. Later, those returning from Italy were told to self-isolate, but the measure was not extended to travellers for every country. There are also questions about how this will work in practice and what it will mean for the travel industry, industry, which is already suffering huge losses. The Home Office has published a full list of exemptions to the new requirements. This list includes road haulage and freight workers, medical professionals travelling to fight COVID-19 specially, and seasonal farm workers who will be self-isolate when they are working. The Home Secretary said the new measures aim to keep the transmission rate down and prevent a devastating second wave of wild farm workers. Um, she added, I fully expect the majority of people will do the right thing and abide by these measures. Good. But she will take enforcement against the minority of people who endanger the safety of others, stupidly. This list to keep the transmission rate down and prevent a devastating second wave. She added, I fully expect the majority of the people will do the right thing and abide by these measures. Labour's shadow, Home Secretary Nick Thomas-Simons, said the party supported the new measures, but it's clear there are no so suit suit substitute for a long-term, well-thought-through approach. The number of people who have died with coronavirus in the UK has reached 36,393, a rise of 351 on Thursday's figure. Meanwhile, the government scientific advice group, SAGE, published the key evidence on safety and the impact of reopening schools. I don't agree with it at all, personally, but anyway. At the daily briefing, government chief scientific advisor, Sir Patrick Valance, said children were at low risk, not zero risk from coronavirus and that reopening schools would push up infection rates. Agreed. It came as teachers, union leaders, said they remained unconvinced it would be safe to reopen primary schools in England on June the 1st. Yeah, agreed. Coronavirus France reveals wicked procul quarantine plans for UK arrivals. People arriving in France from the UK will have to self-isolate for 14 days from the 8th of June, the French government has announced. It comes after Home Secretary Priti Patel revealed quarantine plans for visitors from the UK to the same date. France said it would impose reciprocal measures for any European country enforcing a quarantine. Travellers arriving in France from Spain by plane will also be asked to go into quarantine from Monday. Speaking at Friday's Downing Street briefing, Ms Patel said travellers to the UK will need to tell the government where they will quarantine and face enforcement through random spot checks and 1,000 man fines in England if they do not comply. She said the measure would reduce the risk of cases crossing our border. Lorry drivers, seasonal farm workers and coronavirus medics will be exempt. Right, you say. But not farmers, I don't agree with anyway. The requirement will also not apply to those travelling from the Republic of Ireland, the Channel Island Islands and the Isle of Man. How are we going to pay for the coronavirus crisis? Coronavirus has brought large parts of the economy to a standstill and the government has had to spend billions to support workers, businesses and the NHS. So where, we're, we're, so where is all the money going to come from? Obviously our taxes. How much will coronavirus cost the UK? It's still very early in the crisis so it's impos impossible to tell how big the final bill will be. It could be as much as £2.98 billion. Pounds just for the fifth financial year, April 2020 to April 2021, according to the Office for Budget Responsibility, um, OBR, which keeps tabs on government spending. That's an absolutely enormous sum. To put it into context, before the crisis, the government was expecting to borrow about £55 billion. Pounds. It's nice of it. Plus it has already borrowed £62.1 billion pounds in April, double what analysis has predicted. Schemes to support public services, businesses and individuals such as a job retention scheme will cost £123 billion. Pounds. The OBR estimates this pays for people 
who have been furloughed, which means that the government is paying 80% of their wages so they stay employed. The government will also raise less tax than it hopes. Unemployed or furloughed workers pay less income tax. Businesses pay less tax if their profits are lower and shoppers pay less VAT if they buy less. The final bill could be even higher. Leaked Treasury documents suggest the figure this year could be as much as £337 billion. Even if the pandemic ends quickly, the government will have to borrow more money oh God, in future years too. Homeschooling, the Zoom haves and have-nots. Future in full flow, flow, teacher and student at Epsom College. Throughout James's Morley's usually bustling school classrooms, sit strangely empty and quiet. Chairs sit neatly on the top of the tables after the cleaners have been through, but not usually, but now that they are, obviously. But sitting at his head teacher's desk, he can see and hear students chatting from far away as he watches the potential future of an education in coronavirus world. Well, let's hope not. Sixth form geography students are mid-video conference. Their teacher working from home is talking about volcanoes, transmitting a presentation direct into their homes, just as if it were on the whiteboard in the classroom. When we closed down, I don't think anybody was even contemplating no GCSEs, no A-levels, schools and not coming back for the rest of their ac ac academic year, he says. So sitting staring at a virtual class is not how Mr Morley sets out to lead Furfield School in Leverfield, Surrey, nor did any other head teacher anywhere else in the world. But if social distancing continues until who knows when, he and thousands of other heads know that video classes may now be inevitable. And that in turn is developing into an enormous ex existen existential, existential d dilemma for his profession. Will teachers unintentionally deepen the education divided between Zoom has and Zoom have not? James Morley, multitasking budgets, teachers, contracts and watching a live video class pilot. Since the UK's national closure of schools began in March, many heads like Mr Morley have taken their school through three broad phases of completely reinventing the way they reach. Emergency packs to maintain the learning habit in the first weeks. More comprehensive materials delivered online for all suspects. Grander plans. If schools are going to find it impossible to fully reopen, we're trying not to re replicate the school day, says Mr Mayley. In any given two weeks, there is a core of offer and then other activities to extend the curriculum. Fairfield is now fully embedded in the second of these three phrases. Teachers have converted their classroom materials into PowerPoint-style presentations that are delivered via the homework portal. They call each student every week for a chat and they can see proof of actual progress through formal online assessments. But in its phase, three that the risks really begin to emerge. Say many teachers, if schools try to recreate live online classes, will be the poorest students lose out. First, Mova advantage. Epson College is a grand private school, close to the world's famous race course and five miles from Fairfield, Almost half of its pupils are boarders, many of them children from abroad whose families value a traditional English education like Fairfield. Head, headmaster Jay Piggott and his leadership team will rapidly develop a stop-gap plan of online worksheets to keep teachers going during the first weeks of lockdown. Jay Piggott video has helped the community together, involving with a virtual choir. And like many other independent schools, They've moved far more quickly to full video classes and are now offering all their students a broadcast curriculum throughout the day. They are using Microsoft Teams rather than Zoom. Other providers are available. The school day has been shortened and classes only run for 40 minutes. And there are more breaks to help teachers prepare and give everyone a screen break. His staff and students have already learnt a lot. You have to concentrate much harder within a video conference. You won't get the body language cues, says Mr Piggott. Teaching tends to be more of a monologue, monologue and then a response. 
but there are strengths too. If a teacher sets a question and the students can respond online, then the teacher has received an immediate insight that is very useful, but in terms of the richness of the classroom, is no comparison, not the classroom of the future, everyone hopes. What works for remote learning? Teaching quality is more important than how lessons are delivered. Ensuring access to technology is key, especially for disadvantaged pupils. Peer interactions can provide motivation and improve learning outcomes. Supporting pupils to work independently can improve learning outcomes. Different approaches to remote learning suit different types of con content and pupils. Source EEF, best evidence on supporting students. And Stephen Fraser of the Education Endowment Foundation, a leading education charity, says there is now a historic challenge. Universal and compulsory schooling are a great leveller, he says. The crisis has thrown that universal platform in the air. There is now a huge variability in what students can access. The EEF predicts that the most disadvantaged students may need 12 months or longer to catch up on what they have lost during lockdown. But he adds teaching practice also trumps the platform, whether it's in video conferencing, through to the delivery of hard paper copies of lessons. If it is backed up by high quality teaching, that is what matters. We all know that if a teacher makes a phone call at the start of the week to the child or student or young person or teenager, to who they know, that can be really effective. Instinctively, state schools' heads, like Mr Morley, are restless to do more. That's where the dilemma of embracing video classes will become acute. Some 15% of Fairfield schools are eligible for free school meals. The national average, approximately 10% of the 910 students, or what Mr Morley terms internet poor. Either they have no proper access at all or is limited by availability of devices or bandwidth in the home. We've got parents working from home and they have one laptop between them. If we say 10 o'clock it's your history lesson, that's not meaningful. If you think about schools in more deprived areas, you're not going to be doubling those figures. So you, then, so you are then in a, into a situation where you have to ask how much are those students losing out on compared to their peers. Well, they're all different. That, that is the most moral dilemma that school state heads are now facing, said Mr Maley. Every time we decide to do more, there will be some students who don't get access. The Department for Education has already la launched a major programme to lend laptop and other technology, technology to disadvantaged families. But while James Morley welcomes the government cash, it remains an imperfect solution to what could come for some. A perfect storm of underachievement because of factors beyond sending data across the internet. I'm a historian by trade in wars and period in crisis we adapt. We will probably end up doing some things better than we have ever done then. But that's not a replacement for the things that you lose in the UK. Three children under 15 have died with coronavirus. Do I have to send my child to school? It is not currently, comp currently compulsory for any parent to send their children to school and it is expected that this temporary arrangement where usual sanctions do not apply will continue in England during the summer term. Some children, those deemed vulnerable and those whose parents are key workers, some have continued to attend school during the lockdown. This is optional to the student. As of the 14th of May, about 231,000 children are attending school in England representing 2.4% of pupils who normally attend this includes 73,000 children classed as vulnerable by schools. The Department for Education estimates that this figure represents about 14% of all vulnerable pupils. What's happening in other countries? Schools in Denmark have been open since April, teaching children in small groups. In Germany, schools have been partially reopened for young children and those taking exams. French schools begin reopening this month. A limit of 15 pupils have been put on classes and masks are compulsory for older children. Schools in the Republic of Ireland, Italy and Spain are expected to stay shut until after the summer. Good. Holidays. How are children currently being educated at home? Schools have tried to continue a limited curriculum online, relying on parents and guardians to, to supervise. Confirm cases. Today, 5,163,468. Plus, today, 21,740 deaths today, 337,535 today, plus 434 recovered today, 
2,068,174 today, plus 14,049 globally, country and territory. Confirmed deaths recovered. United States confirmed 1,592,254 deaths. 950,440,000 recovered. Russia confirmed 335,882 deaths. 3,388 107,936 Brazil confirmed 330,890 21,048 United Kingdom confirmed 254,195 deaths 36,393 recovered not stated Spain confirmed 234,824 deaths 28,628 recovered 150,376 Italy 228,658 slash 32,616 slash 136,720 Germany 177,850 8,216 slash 159,900 Turkey 154,500 slash 4,276 slash 116,111 France 114,566 slash 28,289 slash 64,209 Iran confirmed 129,341 slash deaths 7,249 slash recovered unknown not stated India confirmed 125,101 3,720 slash 51,784 Peru confirmed 111,698 deaths 3,244 recovered not stated China 84,000 cases and 520 4,645 slash 78,255 Canada 82,469 confirmed deaths 6,250 slash slash 42,607 recovered Saudi Arabia deaths confirmed 65,077 deaths 351 recovered not stated Mexico 62,527 slash 6,989 slash 42,725 Child 61,857 slash 630 slash 25,342 Wow Belgium 56,511 slash deaths 9,212 slash recovered not stated Pakistan 52,437 confirmed cases. Deaths, 1,101. Recovered, 16,653. The Netherlands, confirmed, 44,888. Deaths, 5,788. Recovered, not stated. Quassa, 40,481 confirmed. 19 deaths. Recovered, 7,893. Ecuador, 35,823 confirmed cases, 3,056 deaths, 3,536 recovered. Belarus, 34,303 slash 190 slash 12,833. Sweden, 32,809 slash 8,925 slash not stated. Switzerland, 30,000. 30,656 slash 1,904 slash 27,900 Singapore 30,464 deaths slash no, com, no confirmed cases 30,466 slash 23 deaths 
slash recovered 12,995. Bangladesh, 30,205. Two hundred slash four hundred and thirty two Portugal thirty thousand two hundred one thousand eight hundred and two hundred and eighty nine slash seven thousand five hundred and ninety United Arab uh, Emirates twenty seven thousand eight hundred ninety two slash two hundred and forty one slash thirteen thousand seven hundred and ninety eight Republic of Ireland twenty four thousand five hundred and six slash one thousand five hundred and ninety two slash not stated Indonesia, 20,796, 1,326, slash 5,057. Poland, 20,619, slash 982, slash not stated. Ukraine, 20,580 confirmed cases, 605 deaths, 6,929 recovered. South Africa, 20,125. Slash three hundred and ninety seven slash ten thousand one hundred and fifty four one one hundred and four Q eight nineteen thousand five hundred and sixty four slash one hundred and thirty eight slash five thousand five hundred and fifteen Colombia nineteen thousand one hundred and thirty one slash six hundred and eighty two slash four thousand five hundred and seventy five Romania seventeen thousand seven hundred and twelve Slash one thousand one hundred and sixty six slash ten thousand seven hundred and seventy seven Israel sixteen thousand six hundred and ninety two hundred and seventy nine slash thirteen thousand nine hundred and fifteen. You should not go to school until you are legally obligated to do so, except for key worker parents, sons and daughters. Stay alert, control the virus, save lives. Thank you for watching today's daily briefing. I'm ending today's briefing. News reporter Dwayne Hart, MK Local News and Awareness UK 3.